End of Dragons is nearly here, and I got the chance to have a sneak peek of what awaits us. Today I'm able to show you a preview of the brand new Guildhall and its capture mission, the Echoval Wilds area and a mission at Fort Aspenwood featuring the highly anticipated Siege Turtles, and a closer look at Kynang City. First up, the new Guildhall, and it is stunning. Even from a first glance, you can see the map artists really outdid themselves. For the capture mission, you join an NPC, Young, along with Kazmir and a rather sarcastic intern. Pleasure to meet you, Ambassador. Young, Advanced Zoning and Development Analyst, MUP. Uh, the what now? Minister would brief me on the details. Our backup force should be here well before your land use permit expires. Hey. Hello. Y you're leading the reinforcements from Minsec? Akane, intern, second class. You the person who approves my unpaid overtime? I don't... Did your squad already scout ahead? Ugh. Well, seems like I need to work on my negotiation skills. To start with, you think you're dealing with a few squatters, but it turns out to be purists who want to purify camp there. TLDR. So this is like holy ground for racists. Yeah, she's right. The masks that they're wearing are actually a callback to the Ministry of Purity from Guild Wars 1, so veteran Guild Wars 1 players might recognise them. Now what's interesting here is that the devs have said that they want guilds of all sizes to be able to complete this. That includes even guilds of two people. They want everyone to be able to go through this mission and enjoy the benefits of having a guild hall. So even the smallest guilds will be able to accomplish this mission, and it will scale to the size of your party. At this time, they said they have no plans to add this scaling to the other Guild Hall missions, but it could be something they revisit eventually. You fight your way through a courtyard and then into the mines. Each of the bosses you come across as you fight your way through are inspired by the End of Dragon Elite specs, so you'll recognize some of the abilities they're doing. These were some pretty fun fights to get through, and even our Elite group got knocked down a few times. At this point, I managed to sneak my way onto the back of a siege turtle and had a look at their abilities and what they can do in combat. As their one skill, you're able to fire siege attacks that explode on impact, damaging and burning enemies. And with the five, you're able to empower the turtle, boosting the acceleration, max speed and its ability to turn. I had way too much fun chucking explosives around here. After the mines, you head up to the arena where you fight another boss with a ton of crazy AoE to avoid. The Enforcer, which is the next boss that you face, has this ability where this hand comes down to crush everyone on the floor. I think that's the one that our party struggled the most with and there were a lot of people down on the floor during this one. The final boss takes you back to the centre of the hall and he's actually based on the Ritualist, which was an original Guild Wars faction's profession. They're able to call on spirits to guide them in battle, and he uses a lot of elemental AoEs, as well as summoning spirits that you need to avoid during the fight. And that's it, once you kill him, the guild hall is unlocked. I got to have a really good look around the hall, and it is absolutely stunning. The entire place is surrounded by crystal clear waters, and it has been confirmed that there will be fishing nodes inside the hall. All of the previous guild halls from now on will also have fishing nodes added to them too. The devs talked about how this was going to be different from other MMOs in that this is something you do with your friends. Most games when you fish you're going to be grinding by yourself, but fishing in Guild Wars 2 is going to be very much more of a group activity. I'm not able to show you any of the details of the guild hall, such as the building upgrades or the vendors for obvious reasons, but you can expect all of your usual utilities from this guild hall. And it's just a nice place to hang out in, I could stay here forever. We also got a look at the Echoval Wilds, which is one of the new zones. This is a place where a lot of those who don't fit into general society live. Whether this is due to their aversion to jade tech or not, they all have their own reasons, which you'll find out about as you progress through the area. There are a few main factions in this zone, the first of which is the Jade Brotherhood, an order that don't have the same ethical limits as many others when experimenting with jade tech. They're prepared to do whatever they need to do in order to make new and powerful discoveries. They'll use bits of old jade tech, repurposing them, and scavenge parts wherever they can find them. There's also a group called the Speakers, who oppose the jade tech entirely and are basically the opposite of the Brotherhood. And finally, we have the Kestrels, who are a friendly faction founded by the Tengu, which are the bird people for anyone unfamiliar. And these people are really the peacekeepers of the zone. 
But whatever's going on in this area, something is deeply wrong, and it set every one of these factions on edge. We got the chance to do a mission at Fort Aspenwood, where the Jade Brotherhood have been messing around with Jade Tech. Workers from the Jade Brotherhood ran out of the lab screaming, and our mission is to find out what's been happening in the lab, and what could possibly be so terrible as to make them all flee. Form up. This is the facility. The intelligence is inside. Every second counts, so it's a good thing we seem to have some extra help. Young hee am I seeing shield generators near the doors? Yep. It's been upgraded since you left. Fortified, so only siege-level ordnance can pierce. Hence the turtles. The mission makes use of siege turtle mechanics. We were told that there are many events in the world where siege turtles can take part and they play a vital role. In this mission, it was the Siege Turtles' job to take down shield generators in order for everyone else to get inside. Once we made it into the lab, we find out that the Jade Brotherhood have been experimenting on Canthan creatures, infusing them with the power of Jade Tech. Here we can see some of the pets that will be available to rangers, including the Wallow, the Phoenix, the White Tiger, and the Adolescent Siege Turtle. The final boss is this huge Jade Tech supercomputer, which has gone into vengeance mode. This encounter in particular was pretty crazy, and there's loads of AoE effects flying all over the floor, generators that spit out orbs in patterns that you need to dance through, and a constant swarm of ads being summoned. The devs mentioned how they really wanted to push players to pay attention to the mechanics, not just in this encounter, but with all the world events in Canther. This is a medium difficulty encounter compared to the others that we're going to find in the expansion, and they really want to challenge their players, as this is content for their max level players at the end of the Dragon Arc. In particular, it was mentioned that the meta event of the map could turn out to be a death fest. Groups need to stay on their toes, and a flat percentage of your health will just be taken by the bosses if you ignore the mechanics entirely. I'm all for that. Make people pay attention. And of course, there is a loot room at the end where you can pick up all your shiny goodies. It wouldn't be Guild Wars 2 without it. To relax after that rather intense fight, we were taken to look at some of the sites of Kaineng City. We only had a small area to walk around in, but even from here you can see how gorgeous this area is going to be. The scale of the architecture is just massive, and I love the sort of cyberpunky feel and all of the technology that you can see around here. There's drones and robots wandering around, lit up notice boards, as well as characters who have prosthetic limbs which are constructed from jade tech. Thanks once again to ArenaNet for allowing me this early glimpse at the expansion. I'm so excited to explore. I will be streaming a lot of Guild Wars 2 after the expansion releases, so do come and say hi over on my Twitch channel sometime at twitch.tv slash dawnwhisper. If anyone is pre-ordering the expansion, I would really appreciate it if you could use my partner links to buy the game. It's the same price, but it helps support the channel, and the links are down in the description. I can't wait to get into Canther, and I hope I'll see all of you there.